Hi guys, let's install Apache and PHP 8 on a Windows 10 machine. To make it convenient, I'll try to make it as short as possible. So let's get started. Open the browser and search Apache for Windows. From the search results, open the httpd.apache.org website. Under the server section, click on the files for Microsoft Windows link. From the download section, choose the Apache Lounge website. There is a reason to choose the Apache Lounge, we will talk about it later. As it mentioned on this website, Apache requires Visual C runtime 2015 to 2019, the download links are also provided. So, let's download it first. As you can see here, I am downloading the 64-bit version, nowadays, 32-bit OS are very rare, however, in case you don't know your system type, you can check it on the My Computer Properties. Here, you can see, I'm using 64-bit OS. If your system is 32-bit, download the x86 version. For a 64-bit OS, I recommend you to install both the 32 and 64-bit runtime. So, let's install it quickly. Now, it's time to download Apache, as of now, the latest version is 2.4.48. Okay, let's download. If there is any ads comes up like this, just click again, and the download will start. Now, open the download directory, and extract the httpd package. Open the extracted folder, and move the Apache 24 directory to C drive, or any other drive you like. In this video, I am using the C drive. Now, open the Apache 24 directory. Here, you can remove these text files, as we are not using them. In Apache, all the executable files are located, in the bin directory, so, the next step is to add this directory, to the environment variables. Let's do that. Copy the bin directory path, and, open my computer properties. Now, in the properties window, there is an advanced system settings option. If your My Computer Properties looks like this, you will find the advanced system settings option, here. Now, open the advanced system settings option, and click on the environment variables button. Here in the system variables section, select the path variable, and click on edit. On the edit window, create a new entry, and add the Apache bin directory path. Now, click on OK, to save, and close the window. Now, to install Apache service, we need a command prompt, with admin privileges. There are multiple ways to do this. Let's do it in a simple way. Right click on the start button, and select the Windows PowerShell, with admin privileges. And, in the PowerShell window, type CMD, and hit enter. This will open the command prompt inside the PowerShell. Once again. Make sure you open PowerShell, with admin privileges. In the command prompt, type path, and hit enter. It will display all directories, that added in the path variable. If everything is done correctly, you will find the Apache bin directory, in the output. Now, type httpd, space minus k, space install, and hit enter. This will install Apache service, and, the firewall exception window will pop up. Open the task manager, and under the services tab, you will find the Apache service. Now, try to start the service by command, httpd, space minus k, space start, or through the task manager. If the service fails to start, then check for other applications, which use the default HTTP port, or in other words, port 80. Now, in the browser, access the local host, to see the default website. Good, this is our default page, index.html. It is located in the hddocs directory, inside Apache 24 directory. If you can't see the file extension, check the file extension option, under the view tab, in the Windows Explorer. Ok, now, let's do some changes in this file, and see how it goes. Excellent! Our Apache installation is now complete. Let's install PHP. In the browser, search, PHP for Windows. From the search results, select the windows.php.net website. Now, open the downloads link. 
Here, the latest version, as of now, is 8.0.8. .8. As I mentioned earlier, PHP developers recommend to use Apache, from the Apache Lounge website. Now, let's download PHP. Here, you will find two different download options, non-thread safe package, and thread safe package. As it mentioned here, we have to use thread safe version with Apache. And, if you are using IIS, use, non-thread safe version. More details about these builds, are given here. PHP also require VC runtime 2015 to 2019. As we install those for Apache, we can skip this step. Now, let's download PHP thread safe build. Open the download folder, and extract the PHP package. Rename the extracted folder to PHP. Or, you can add version numbers, along with the folder name, like PHP 80, or PHP 8. Use whatever you like, it's fully up to you. Once you named it, move the folder to C drive, or, to the drive where Apache is located. Now we need to add this PHP folder, to the environment variables, let's do that quickly. Okay. Let's open the command prompt, and check if it worked. Alright, as the window is already open, path variable is not updated yet. Let's reopen the command prompt, and check it again. Good, PHP directory is available in the path variable. Now, let's see if PHP is working. In the command window, type PHP, space minus V, and hit enter. If everything is good, this will display the current PHP version. Ok, now it's time to configure Apache. Open the Apache 24 folder, and go to the conf directory. Inside the conf directory, you will find the Apache configuration file, httpd.conf. Open the file and scroll down to the end. In Apache, PHP is loaded as a module. So let's load the PHP module. In the conf file, type load module, then php underscore module, then in double quotes, add the path to the php8 module. It is a DLL file, located inside the PHP folder. Here, this is our DLL file. In case this file is missing, then you downloaded the non-thread safe build. Now, we need to add a file handler, to read PHP files. So, type add handler, then the file mime type, application slash x dash httpd, dash php, followed by the file extension, dot php. Finally, add the path to the PHP configuration file, php.ini. Usually, it's the PHP directory itself. So, type in, php inidir, without space, and in double quotes, add the path to PHP directory. Remember, it's only the directory path, not the complete file path. Here, in the PHP directory, there are two default configuration files, php.ini, for development and php.ini, for production servers. There are some configuration differences between them. We will talk about it in later videos. For now, copy the development configuration file, and rename it to php.ini. Now, let's test our configuration. Save the httpd config file, and open the command prompt. Use the command, httpd space, minus t. This will check the configuration file, and if there is something wrong, it will display it. As you can see here, the server name parameter is not set. Go back to the configuration file and search for server name parameter. Here it is. Actually, server name should be the domain name, but, we don't have any domain name, so, let's set it to localhost. Uncomment the server name parameter, by removing the leading hash, then, replace the example.com, with localhost. Okay. Let's save the file, and test it again. If everything is alright, it will display, syntax OK. Let's restart Apache service, to make these changes effective. Our PHP 8 configuration is now complete, let's create a PHP file, and test it on our server. Open the hddocs folder, and change the index.html file, to index.php. Open the file and remove all the contents, and add some PHP code. Here, I am using the PHP info function. It is used to check configuration settings, and information about the current state of PHP. 
Ok, now let's save the file, and check it on the Bowser. Oh, I forgot to specify a default PHP page, in the Apache configuration. Let's do that quickly. In the Apache configuration file, search for directory index, without space. Here, in the directory module section, you will find the directory index directive. It simply means, Apache will search for that file automatically, when the directory is accessed. We can list multiple files in directory index. Ok, let's add index.php here. Now, save the file, and restart Apache service. Ok, let's refresh the browser, and you will see the PHP info page. This page shows almost everything, about our current PHP setup, one important thing here, is to look for the loaded configuration file. If the configuration file is not loaded, check the PHP IANA directory path, in the Apache configuration file. Ok guys, it's time to wrap up. I hope you learned something new, from this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, please click on the like button, and subscribe to this channel. And, as always, Thank you for watching.